Hello. Hi, hi. Ant Man and the Quantum Wasp. And the other wasp. Ant Wasp yeah. and the Mania. Uh, Quantum mm -hmm. Quantum Vaniaville. We did uh, have Quantum of Solace time and Mania. Space. Quantum of Solace. How many people even saw that film? A lot of people don't even remember what it's about. I certainly don't. Uh. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what that one was about. Rags, do you ever watch Bond? James Bond? Um, I've seen some. They've been fine, generally. Who's your favorite Bond? Oh, I think that I really like Pierce Brosnan Bond. He just, I just really like him. Where are you, Fringy? Problem is, I haven't seen enough of each, uh given Bond to really make an informed decision about which one I like the most. Mm -hmm. Like, it would be just totally arbitrary. <laughs> Fair enough. I think I like, I like Sean Connery and Pierce Brosnan. They just seem to be very Bondy. You know, it's very easy to imagine Bond in their face sort of fills mm. in the, the ether. Don't strike me as the two most popular choices. I think they did a good job. I think so. I wouldn't be sure. I'm not sure. I don't if... know how many people say Daniel Craig is their favorite, you know, by comparison. Uh, he, he annoys Bond fans, though, because of his comments about how much he hates playing Bond. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's not, that's not a great strategy to win him over. No. <laughs> but hey, there you go. Anyway, no we're here to read some messages that came in while we were talking about the Ant-Man. So that's exactly what I shall now do. Mm -hmm. Um, the movie included ants for their socialism. They left out wasps because they're pollinizers. Ha! Ah, oh, ah, ah, fun, ah, fun. Ah, ah. Anyone else disappointed yeah. that the trailers showing Kang offered Scott the five years he missed back was just false advertising? Yeah, it's annoying. Well, maybe they changed their mind on that one. Definitely. <laughs> like, which shows you how you know, close to the final cut, like, significant changes get. Well, yeah, I think they'll reshoot that film in January. That would have been such insane. a. It just sounds like a better film already. The idea that he's going to offer his his daughter's life that he missed to you know back. Mm, yeah, but uh, maybe that was a little bit too emotionally resonant and potent. Now, like, nah, that's uh, that's a little bit, it's a little bit too uh, interesting. How about instead he just says, "I'll kill her if you don't do the thing I want you to do." Mm. There you go. I mean, uh, that's I guess that's instant drama, I suppose. Like, imagine Kang didn't even capture him. He just. Just said, listen, I need an ant person to do a job, and uh, if I if you do this, I will be able to give you, you know, blah 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 time, blah blah blah, and then you know during his mission, uh, he meets back up with what's her name, and then she's like, actually, I know he's evil, you know, and and then yeah, I just I don't know, I'm just it's just annoying, the whole well, thing. Well, just anything bit. else probably could anything been, else, yeah. No, we got Modok. Look at him. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Hey guys, what do you think of the Simpsons movie? Ross really movie. good. I, I have not seen the Simpsons good. movie. I like it. I'd probably say it's I hear the it's good. Last really quality um piece of Simpsons like material. When I say really quality, it's still not like as good as Golden Age, but it's uh it's pretty funny. I think so, yeah. How come they never made another I think one? It's kind of uh I'm not sure why they didn't, because the first movie was very successful. Um, it wasn't a very expensive film to make, and it made a lot of money. Um, so I'm not sure why. I think they floated the idea, but it's just not come to fruition for some reason. It was ages ago, right? 2007. Uh, yeah. Which, um, means that we're about as far removed from the Simpsons movie as the Simpsons movie was from the beginning of the Simpsons itself. Yeah, which budget is pretty of crazy. 75 million and worldwide gross yeah. of 536 million. For a traditionally animated film, those are some good numbers. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Uh, that's not a very expensive traditionally animated film compared to, like, Disney. And it made about as much money as a lot of the Disney films would have made in the Renaissance, you know, era. Not the Renaissance era, you know, like, at the early modern period. <laughs> no, the Renaissance, you know, the Disney Renaissance in the 90s. I'm not sure why they haven't made one. Um, I guess the interesting part is that a lot of the... There were at least a, a few of the veteran Simpsons writers were involved in writing the Simpsons movie. Um, whereas, you know, there's there's nobody left from, like, those first ten years, I don't think. I don't think? Yeah. Little fun fact. In Sonic the Hedgehog 2, when Sonic and Knuckles are fighting in the temple, 
the track I Shrink Therefore I Am from the OST of Ant-Man and the Wasp is used. Uh, really? That's some. Um, <laughs> great. Is that like right. a matter of temp music that they just ended up sticking with completely, or...? No clue. That's uh, fascinating. Here's some money for those awesome PFPs. Yeah, this is when we arrived at with the Council of Modox. <laughs> As someone just said, this is this where I sign up for the Council of Modox? Yes. It is. Mm -hmm. Does Kang give cause an incursion in the QR like in Mom? Don't ask. Too difficult. Too too hard. And apparently incursions are gonna be the big thing to judge like to create the Avengers threats and stuff. Oh, They're I actually gonna run with incursions. Unreal. Case, which uh yeah, thanks, Michael. Sticking with it, wow. That's Nobody incredible. even knows what they are. They're just gonna make it up as they go along. It'll be like incursions just... are just time problems. It's an excuse to put in whoever Dude. we want from whatever thing we want. Imagine they go as far as turning incursions into like paradoxes instead, like because the writers just don't talk to each other. Mm. So they, they just make no. shit up. And they're just like, yeah, an incursion yeah, is no, when you yeah. have two of yourself in the same position when they shouldn't be, or some bullshit. And here's the big problem, guys, is no matter what they say about, yeah, we're going to slow down, we're going to take our time, we're going to, you know, <laughs> try and focus more on quality control. The problem is you are running forth with, like, some pretty bad foundations. Oh, yeah. To yeah. say that they're pretty bad would be, to put it lightly, um, the foundations are fucked. And they now need to move forward with them. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's probably, I don't know, I don't think you can recover, <laughs> narratively speaking, anyway. Definitely in big trouble. If you saw yeah, time... Yeah, I mean, it, it really is just, they, they really just don't have any foundation for me to care about. I'm mm -hmm. just like, I just don't give a shit about what's going on and what it's happening to. Like, I just don't give a shit. I mean, and I mentioned like Guardians is the end of the that IP, and then all that's left is Spider-Man's high school, no college years. <laughs> college years, and that's more or less the only thing I'm I'm still interested in is Spider-Man after uh, Guardians. Um, if you saw time as I do, you'd give money to the German. People do give money to the Germans. The German. Schlieken, flugen, schlieken, schlieken. It says something that my normie friend that usually watches Marvel with me said, can we just hang out at home instead? <laughs> <laughs> we play a board game? Do we have to go see a Marvel film? It's pretty funny. Can you do anything else, please? Started watching Game of Thrones. Wanted to for a while, given your Rage videos. I wanted to watch the rest of the series, though. Just witnessed the Red Wedding. Also, yes, I forgot how Super Chats work. Oh, well, you, you nailed it. So don't worry about that, but as for, yeah, the Red Wedding was big, huge, awesome event, well-written payoff, season three finale-ish Game of Thrones time, back when things went piss. Back in the before times. Uh, I took a girl to see Ant-Man 3 on her first date. Hopefully she gets the message. Uh... There's a couple messages you could draw from that, like you hate her, or that you don't want to pay attention to the movie. You want to do other stuff, you know? There's... there's... Hopefully she doesn't hate you, you know? Wings quote of the day. I don't celebrate holidays, so wishing me Merry Christmas is kind of pointless. <laughs> oh, that sounds reminiscent of what he said about when somebody wished him Thanksgiving. It was like, yeah. you know, you're not even American, so I'm not sure why you'd be, <laughs> you know, saying Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> like, as if, if you don't live in America, you can't observe that it's a holiday in America and wish them th Happy Thanksgiving. This is if you search his name on YouTube, all you get is like Wings of Redemption down the rabbit hole, the continual fall of Wings of Redemption, the tragic tale of Wings of Redemption. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, all you get bombarded with is essentially the fall from, I suppose, some level of grace. <laughs> How long? Well, I think the thing was was that he, uh, it was just that era that was like the Machinima respawn, like Call of Duty commentary sort of era, and he was he was one of the early ones. It's it's. <laughs> It's kind of interesting, it seems like Boogie might have been the same case as well, right? It's like, well, you were early, and there wasn't a lot of competition in those spaces. You know, meanwhile he's got, now... <laughs> he's got neon lights in the background now. What, wings? And he's kind of trying to grow a goatee. Oh, okay. Is he... The thing is, he can. That he means... could turn it around. 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> those two pieces of information are like <laughs> Ooh, neon lights and an attempt at a goatee. All right, he's well, turning that's, it around, everyone. That's well, a recipe I, I, for well, success. The thing is, it's it's the little things, right? It's the little <laughs> victories, the the small the small battles prevailing over them. You know, growing a goatee is a is a battle. It's a, for some it's a battle in and of itself. Yeah. Unfortunately, the the reality is that if you're trying to grow a goatee, that means you cannot grow a goatee, which means okay, shave your face. He, I think he's just letting the whole thing grow, like the whole beard. He's not. You have to you have to shave it more often than he is. I guess is what I was. Saying. I think he's just being lazy and not shaving, mm -hmm. and uh, probably what's going on. And does that not offend you, Rags? Um, yeah, kind of does. Religiously, <laughs> poison. It's a poison I think that the, I, I think that uh, I see this a lot. Young men, in particular, with women, you don't get this too much. But with young men, they're they're they they don't really grow facial hair that much or that well, and um, it 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 takes either forever for it to grow or they just don't grow much, and they they choose to keep it on their faces, and it just looks really unappealing. Um, the, the, these tiny little bits of hair that's kind of speckled on their chins and maybe on their upper lip, and I'm like, guys, just shave it off man just go clean shit go with a clean shaven look you're not like a big boy because you're starting to grow facial hair and you're like 30 like not everyone grows facial hair it's just not it, it's not everyone's the same so oh, but that's that's sort of a tough thing to accept isn't it that you can't well, it's like really the, good. it's like you know going bald you know it's like just when you start going bald then just shave it off and go with the bald look you know, there's nothing wrong Colin, with that george carlin disagrees with you he thinks that you should just own the fact that you're balding Oh well, he's wrong. Um, George Collins uh, said basically, it, you know, you gotta, you just, you know, you're balding. Like, don't shave your your head. It never looks good on a white guy. I think was the joke. Oh, uh, I, <laughs> I definitely don't agree with that. Um, but uh, yeah, when oh, it comes he lived to the facial stuff, because he didn't shave his head even when he yeah, was. Yeah, it's fair. Balding, yeah, balding. Yeah, totally fair. Um, but yeah, my like with my family, it's a huge mixed bag on if you grow uh, facial hair or not. Um, like my brother grows a full beard and everything. And my dad, he sort of grows facial hair, sort of kind of in the middle, but it doesn't really go all the way around. My grandpa, I've never seen him with any facial hair. My other one I never met. He died when I was too young. Um, and so it's like in it, it, like, like cousins, it's super hit and miss. Um, like cousins and uncles, whether it's facial hair or not. And I grow up pretty decently. I don't grow like a full beard. I just, I just never, ever could. I just doesn't even grow there. But I grow really nice, you know, kind of in the middle, sort of like my dad does. Um, and so I keep that trimmed and looking nice. And, and I really like the look. But some people just don't grow facial hair. But, you know, because they're, you know, men and they have some yeah, testosterone and they grow. Yeah, you know? Yeah, it's like, and it's fine. It's like you're not lesser of a man because you don't grow facial hair. It's just, some men just don't. It's just, just some people do and some people don't. So just keep yourself clean shaven. It's a good, totally, it's a totally fine look. Chicks dig it. It's nice and easy. Just, you know, zoop, zoop. Take care of it because, you know, just, just go with it. It's fine. Don't hang on to this idea that you need to have facial hair to be virile or to be manly or to, you know, exude this, you know, masculine kind of vibes. Like, no, you don't have to. Don't feel like you need to because you're doing yourself a disservice and you're shooting yourself in the foot by hanging on to these little scraggly, messy, tiny, semi-translucent hairs on your face, like you're an adolescent, you know? You're right. Oh, this all come from like... just wigs this goatee. It doesn't look that bad. Well, I like... guess it's prompted it because <laughs> it's something that I'm pretty sure Rags has complained about of, like, not shaving your neck. Like, I'd, um, you've complained oh, yeah, about you that. Oh, yeah, you shave your neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The neck beard. I feel like, uh, I get the impression that, like, men could be helped out tremendously with just, like, you know, just like, I don't know, like attending one class on group, like a, making a sure that you're well groomed, you know? Grooming. Yeah, very yeah. big. I just, you can get a cheapo 25 buck electric shaver from Amazon and that'll work just fine for most guys. And just, just have a, yeah, shave your neck hair down there. Uh, and, and, you well, know, I suppose just, it speaks to uh, mean, kind of almost the dichotomy in terms of the standards that will be imposed on the sexes, you know, how like, kind of with women, there's almost this very high bar that's socially set in terms of uh, being well, you know, groomed and well presented, well kept, I suppose. Whereas with men, it's like, ah, uh, fucking whatever, you know? 
<laughs> like, um, you don't need to be attack and carry yourself really at all. I don't know. I think with I, I think that as guys, we might have that perspective because we don't really pursue most, you know, since the vast majority of people are straight, they don't really look at other guys as, you know, something to be attracted by. So we might not even really think about how guys sort of present themselves. But I think to women, it's of even more importance that a guy can do those sorts of things. All right, um, I, I don't doubt that it's... I, I guess what I'm saying is it's, like, almost a lack of awareness of it just helps tremendously to just, like, shave. Or, absolutely. You know, just the little things. Just, you know, just, yeah, like, the, the, yeah, little, the little things. things. Like, that can get you a long, a long way. Getting a shirt that fits properly, those sorts of things. But, like, you know... Uh, yeah. I yeah, please get a shirt that fits. But I mean, I mean, look, if Wings of Redemption can do it because he's growing a goatee, then you can do it too, all right? <laughs> yeah, if, if Wings of Wings of Liberty's too lazy to shave a goatee, that means you. He's can wearing shave a little yours. top hat there. Oh, is he? Well, <laughs> no, it's not even a little top hat. That's a big top hat. Oh, that's a pretty neat. Hopefully, uh, because one of the things I know that <laughs> Wings of Redemption uh struggles with sometimes is that he wants to play other games, but. He gets more viewers when he plays Call of Duty, but he hates Call of Duty as he will as he will often uh explain. So hopefully people were okay with him, you know, taking a break from Call of Duty to to play Elden Ring. Yeah. <laughs> Bonus quote. I don't feel like saying pimp, I'm in a bad mood. Yeah. Only fan. Um, open the blast doors, close the blast doors. That's a reference to something, right? Something. That's right. Blast doors. That sounds fun. I don't remember. What, is it? That's Star Wars. You, when does that happen? Us? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I'm not fucking Yeah, on. Oh, Han yeah, Solo. Han Solo with the Stormtrooper. I, I, for a second four. there, I was like, are you memeing? Yeah, like, it's, yeah, Han Solo. Yeah, because remember, the the um, the um Stormtroopers are saying, close the blast doors, close the blast doors to trap them in or to make it look oh, like they're yeah, trying to yeah, trap them in. That. Han Solo shoots it, then they say, no, no open the blast doors because we got to get through too, you know? For some reason, I was, I, my brain went to uh, parody movies first. I was thinking Spaceballs, and I was looking through my Spaceballs files in my head, like... Uh, to be fair, destroying a timeline is no big deal. Every sperm is sacred. Every sperm is great. It's a Monty Python song. Yes, that is fair. You know, really, what? I think what, my, what's the difference, really? My favorite Monty Python songs. I think uh, bright. I always look on the bright side of life is going to be the top one. Great song, uh, uplifting message. Uh, legitimately good song. I, I really like it a whole bunch. And after that, it's probably Eric the Half a Bee. All right. I like the old Ant Man theme. Too bad this movie happened to ruin it. I can't remember the Ant Man. I don't think theme. that the I don't think that the new rendition ruins it, but I certainly think it lacks the clarity of the original. I prefer the original, yeah. Yeah. You don't remember it, Rags? Um, maybe if I heard dun, it again, dun, it would. Do 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 is that helping? I don't wham, think it. Wham, 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 Yeah, it just doesn't <laughs> it's, quite. I, it's, it's one of the themes I like. Uh, yeah, same. As a motif, yeah, it's a neat one. But the new one's a little bit more uh, loud, I think. <laughs> Yeah, for whatever reason, it just isn't sticking with me. And a lot of the times music does, but for whatever reason, it's just just slipping away. I, I, an Iron Man theme. Give it a try. I'm now going to test you on Marvel music. Uh-oh. Yeah, and we're not yeah. doing Avengers. That's too easy. No, that's way too easy. Give me an Iron Man theme. I'll accept any. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Man, yeah, okay. Nothing, nothing. Yep. Okay. 
I, no, I, 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 am I supposed to like guess which one it's from or I, just, I just was th I was hoping you'd go oh I recognize that I think that's all um, I wanted I think it's been too long since I've seen the Iron Man movie what about Captain America you got anything oh this this um, should be easy this one should be easier as far as I'm concerned I probably. No, okay, no. Maybe it's just the way that you're doing it. I don't know. I, it's nah. probably. I just don't remember. <laughs> you recognize uh, these, Mola? Of course. Right, yeah, rag, exactly. rag, rag. Guardians. You remember Guardians, don't you? Come on. You know Guardians. Probably if I heard it, but not off the top of my head. I Sorry, you don't know it then. <laughs> No, not the Guardians one, no. But it's one of those, if I hear it, then it'll... That, that one's the most familiar of the three. Jesus. I just I just, I just don't remember a lot What's of What's Spider-Man's? <laughs> Spider-Man. Oh, uh, you know that see. one. Come on, this one plays like a million times in every <laughs> single one. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Da -na -na, da -na -na. No, goddammit. You no, know, everybody knows <laughs> that one. Yeah. MCU Spider-Man. Oh, give me a second. Um, uh... Yeah, music tends to stick out for me. Um, it, with MCU, I just, it, yeah. it really isn't, which is so weird because there's so many, so much music that I like have in my head and could sing. So the and thing with MCU Spider-Man that blows my mind is that is like the most recurring one of all of the like Very MCU versatile. films. Well, wait, let's give just him, keep um, doing if we it. go, um, dun, dun. Is that enough for you to kick off? Da, 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 da. No. Uh. You. Da, da, hey, you know what? That wasn't too bad, Rags. But yeah, you see, your brain right. is putting things together, yeah. I think. Da, da, da. Ah, da, 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 da. Yeah, I just. I can't remember. I like legitimately mm -hmm. can't put it together in my head. And I know mm -hmm. I've heard it mm -hmm. so much. I've. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dun 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 dun. Is that helping? Dun 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 dun. I I know I've heard these so much, but I just I just can't remember MCU music. It's okay if you don't remember a decent I, I amount legit, of it. Um, I legit just don't. For and I know I've seen these movies, many of them like multiple times, and like I've seen. You all know the original Iron Man one uh, song, right? Um, I don't think he did because I hummed yeah, one of them. You did, you did, well, you did three. We can reveal I did that. one of them. Yeah. Well, one of them was three, but one of them was one. Well, kind of. It was it was one of the songs from that film. Do, no, do you remember the Black remember. Adam theme, Rags? Because <laughs> I do. <laughs> if he doesn't remember the MCU things, he won't remember the fucking well, Black I mean, Adam well, one. Well, it's weird because, like, the Wonder Woman one is stuck in my head. Yeah, but that's because they that one. Thank you. But it's really. Yeah. But it's really. Yeah, but it's really insistent. You yeah, know? they've, they've like, kind of ruined a, it. It used to be really cool. Now I don't like it anymore. Same. I used um, to like it, and they ruined it. Whereas, like, like MC Spider Man, they kept doing so many different interesting things with it that I I love it. But like, when it comes to a whole lot of like classical music and all the like all the light motifs of uh, uh, the Lord of the Rings and uh, like all the Star Wars stuff, like I've got, um, mm -hmm. I've. I've, I've just, like, a lot of that stuff just sticks in my head. I feel like I could fucking hum the Dvorak's New World Symphony, but a lot of it, for whatever reason, the Star Wars, or not Star Wars, the, the MC stuff, it just doesn't, it's not sticking with me. So and I don't the know why. Thing I have no is, clue. Is that, well, remember, there was an every frame of painting video about it not sticking with people, though it was baffling that none of those people knew the Avengers theme. Like, that blew my mind, because everybody knows the Avengers theme, right? You think so? Yeah, exactly. It's it's real easy to remember too. I guess it's interesting, like how music will stick with people. Because I would say that I remember a a lot more music than I think the average person watching like films tends to remember. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why I remember some things so much and other things just. Uh, I think it I could just, just be a matter of like attachment to whatever it is, right? Like I remember Terminator theme very well. I remember all the Star Wars music really well. Um, I remember a lot of video game music really well. But I mean, how is it that I can remember the video game music from video games I haven't played, other than just that I think the compositions are cool when I heard them? Like, I knew what the Resident Evil 4, you know, uh, save music was, like, 
before having played the game because it's super iconic and it's really memorable. Hmm. I don't know that we'll ever figure out the answer to how. Yeah, I'm just not rag. sure. I can't remember any of those. <laughs> well, let's see if it's set in at all. Rags, what's the Guardians one? No, I'm, I'm not going to be able to hum it to you. <laughs> Oh. I'm just not. I'm just not. I'm not going to be able to. I just don't know where to even start. Because I like. I've. I love those movies. I. I think they're great. But I just the Guardians theme. I just can't. I can't hum it. I just can't pluck it out. Well, what's What's the Captain Marvel theme, Mola? Captain Marvel. Fuck. Ooh. Because <laughs> I couldn't tell you what it is. I don't even know if she no, has one. I, I can't. No, she's probably got one. I just. I don't know what it is. Everybody's got one. I think. But uh. Yeah. They um. <laughs> I don't know what's uh I remember I found She Hulk's particularly generic uh whatever her oh, theme fuck, was. Yeah, the thing I I my brain is playing with it in my head and I'm like, go yeah, away. I don't like yeah, it. Exactly. It's uh yeah, incredibly incredibly generic. I don't know what Shang Chi's uh theme was. Nope, I don't know what the Black Widow one was either. I've forgotten that. Right. Well, I wonder if that's a matter of uh Oh, oh, Rags, Doctor Strange. Huh. Because that one they play a lot. They're keeping consistent on that one to some extent. How does it start? Dun, 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 dun. I basically just gave it away. That's the whole thing. Dun, 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 dun. That's Doctor Strange. Yeah, I. Nah. Uh, well, the, we I'm on one one. I was interested in it because. Uh... That one's like burned into my skull. I didn't. I thought it was mostly the same for everybody. The dun 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 dun. Yeah. Dun 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 That one's dun 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 dun. Because it's so well, it's mechanical. Because they carry that one through into other versions, right? When he's flying like the the suit for the first time, they incorporate a lot of that sort of structure into that song as well. Mm. Um, it's kind of crazy that they decided not to stick because. You know, the Iron Man 3 one, it's like, that's like fine on its own, but it really doesn't seem befitting of Iron Man. It just came in out of nowhere. It's like, oh, we're doing this now. Okay. And fine. it's very orchestral compared yeah. to what Iron Man's school, uh, like soundtrack was before, which is much more rock infused. Um, it is interesting to think about. It's kind of, kind of interesting as well as I think like DC for a time kind of because like the soundtrack for man of steel and batman v superman is pretty great i, I like it a lot um it's just a shame <laughs> just a shame that it's hard to latch onto those for characters you know what about the yodeling did you love that uh well yeah but that wasn't han zimmer <laughs> well, still han zimmer did the first two. <laughs> no i don't i never no the i didn't like the yodeling but i, I like oh. lex luther's theme a lot that one was interesting do you remember it no Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I, I like that one. It's a, again, it's a shame. Yeah. What we've learned is, uh, I don't know what we've learned other than Rags doesn't know Marvel music. No, I really don't. Let's be real; most people probably don't. Yeah, I just don't. Which sucks because there's loads of good songs in there. Though I would have yeah. some faith that people remember the Guardian stuff. Like, I'd hope to hear the Guardian stuff come back in the third one. I, I don't see why it wouldn't. They brought it back in the set. It just seems like there's no reason not to keep themes running. Everybody like like. What is, like, if, if there's something that Battlefield kind of has on Call of Duty, it's that it has, like, a theme that's persisted since the very beginning. And, like, the what you get with each different game is a different rendition of the same theme, kind of, you know, tailored to whatever the time period is uh, that that Battlefield game is set. And it's, like, really cool to have that running over the course of 20 years. I think um, we're getting, like, since we're getting so many sad things that are probably going to happen in this third one, and it's, like, the end of an era... I would expect a slow piano version of the Guardians theme to show up. Well, it's kind of what they did with uh, kind of what they did with Spider-Man, right? Where there was a much more grand version of the MCU Spider-Man theme at the end there. Yeah. Um, well, you got your money's worth, whatever your question was. I don't think that had anything to do with their question, did it? <laughs> like, uh, I think it would ask about the, yeah. Well, anyway. Ant Queen is a misnomer. They are really just birthing slaves. Um, yeah, like a queen. Also, type 2 Civ means they physically build a Dyson Sphere. They should kill Kang in 10 minutes. Yeah, uh, type 2 means you've uh, essentially gained control over your solar system. Yeah, and I think people's type defense of that would be that Hank's talking out of his ass. And it's like, yes, Hank Pym. He's but Hank is a. Yeah, Hank Pym, one of the smartest people on Earth. Doesn't know, I mean, what it I know, what, I know what a type 2 civilization is, and I'm me, all right? 
He knows the what is, they are. Maybe they are. It's just that uh, they seem pretty limited against Kang, don't they? Well, I think that it, the, the reality is that a Type 2 civilization might be straddling the line of incomprehensibility. That's what, yeah, what I'm getting at is like, someone might think, what do you mean they beat Kang? And I'd be like, no, no, no. I mean, like, why aren't they annihilating like, him? Yeah, it, 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 well, I mean, let's put it this way. There is not... On the on the Kardashev scale, we're not like that far from like the Napoleonic era, um, on like on that on that scale. But imagine a Napoleonic army going against like the modern like U.S. army today. <laughs> like it's not even like that wouldn't even be anything. It would just be over before it even started. Yeah. And we're talking like leagues more advanced. Um, once you get into like Type Two, like Type Two, I'm pretty sure is not even on the cards for humanity for like. Presumably centuries, maybe even thousands of years. But the ants, they got it all figured out, and, and their their strategy was bum rush Kang. <laughs> like, okay. As a physics student, I'll say that in the real world, this place would be a nightmare. Schrodinger, Schrodinger's equation would mean having a location is impossible, not to mention quantum tunneling and relativity. Hey, look, all right, you think that they even opened one physics book writing scripts for this? They saw the title, but we could just do that, quantum. There we go. Yeah, you can just do whatever that. you want. It's not like quantum physics is, is like a field of physics that is routinely being studied. It's just like made up bullshit. It's not like we have, it's not like we figured anything out about it. Uh... If I start a campfire, does that burn a galaxy's worth of micro life? If that's the case, uh, that's hilarious. Also, hi, Modoc. No, the quantum realm is like the size of, like I said, the state of New York, maybe even less. It's more like Rhode Island. And it and it can be accessed from anywhere. Somehow. Yeah, from just any any place on Earth. So, so like, it also seems to be infinitely were... large, but like not. Well, I mean, in terms of, like, a scale, it should be infinitely large to, like, a like, the universe is infinitely large, and, like, the quantum realm is presumably in this universe, so, like, on a scale, it would just be, like, it'd be, like, the universe times by, like, numbers that I don't even, like, I can't even figure out, you know? <laughs> like, numbers I haven't even heard of, like, in terms of figuring out that scale, but whatever. No, it's just, like, one city. I mean, it's infinitely confusing. That's for sure. Well, uh, that's that's what they're relying on, right? Because of its no clue how any of this works or what's going on. The writers are setting up Kang as our greatest hero in the war against the other Kangs. He, like he who remains, has seen the future and understands their importance in defeating the other variants. You think that he would do a better job of just explaining all of that to uh, all the if people? If that's in actually Canada? anywhere near where we're actually going, like the that he, he was the, the one in Ant Man or... will be eventually the guy who like saves the universe from the other kangs jesus christ well the big problem that they're facing is that uh in terms of introducing him as the big bad of this uh saga man you had one opportunity like to make a, a good first impression and jesus yep there is no way kangs conquer universes with reality warpers and celestials with only a traditional army I mean, yeah, they, and then, yeah. I didn't understand why he was bringing that army anyway. Like, he was like, prepare, we are going to the surface. Like, what What? What are you doing with them? What What's... end? Yeah, to what end? You need some, like, hyper high-tech stuff that I wouldn't even understand. I thought that was all in his ship. I didn't realize he needed an actual, like, standing army. Like, what, what do they do? Uh, it's a good thing they sent Kang to the quantum realm on Earth. Specifically San Francisco. Is it Francisco. just... It's funny you say that, because it's like, is it just the quantum realm, no matter where you are in universe? Like, you could be that, on fucking wow, Captain so Marvel's planet, is, and just... That's... Uh, so the quantum realm is, like, actually not big at all. I'm sorry, man, I don't, I don't think anyone knows what the fuck's going on. Mm-hmm. Has Fringy ever seen Happy Tree Friends? Would love to hear his thoughts on that cartoon. Yeah, of course I've seen Happy Tree Friends. That's a relic of the, uh, like, late 2000s, early 2010s on the internet. I bought the that box set. Crazy! Then, great. Did you buy the box set? Oh yeah. Love it. I remember when I got shown it. I think it was like on a bus trip, and then somebody was watching it on their iPod, <laughs> and they showed it to me. And I was like, "Oh my god, this you know, is awesome!" <laughs> do, you know the, do you know the intro theme for them? La 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 la
Yeah, this old, like, really happy and wholesome, but then you see death. First draft, and then it's got a blank in quotations, is what all of these movies and shows have become. First draft jokes, first draft plots, first draft characters, first draft drama. It's all mindless because they don't respect it. True. Mm -hmm. There's no respect for the writing process from the people who are writing all the way up to the people who are paying for all this. Well, I presume that what the commenter is pointing out as well is no respect for the material, the original material. Oh, it's like, yeah, this is not even... Goofy shit. They this barely like respect their own ladder. work. Of course they don't respect it, the source. That it, That is a... yeah. It does seem like they barely respect their own work, doesn't it? Absolutely. To end the Kang phase, the new Avengers will have to find and kill original Kang. Oh, oh dude. Imagine they do a fucking Bioshock Infinite where they're like, we have to go to the first Kang that split all the other Kangs off. What, and they drown the Hulk because he's the last one left? They, they, like, they the drown, like, team. the original Kang or something. Yeah. <laughs> Be before he Man. discovers the power to... That's, That's right. going to be it, isn't it? That's actually going to be how they yeah. beat him. They have to go back to and the what, first what Kang. What is your name? He's Kang. He's he who remains. No, I'm both. <laughs> oh, my God. People cause... thought that was brilliant. It was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a grandfather paradox. It's just like it's so Matthew fucking dumb. Said. All those, all the Elizabeths are there to drown you. It's just like yeah. I don't remember people being like, was remember Bioshock, was uh, Bioshock original. Like it ends with all those little sisters having grown up thanking Jack for the work that he did, and this yeah, one ends with all the Elizabeths yeah. drowning. Uh, uh, why am I forgetting his name? Booker. Booker, yeah. Booker DeWitt. Ugh. Booker Dimwit. Parallels, he, guys. He just let himself drown as well. It's like, okay, sure. More like a pair of L's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Look, guys. Ugh, what a shitty game. That film yeah, is that just... That was, that, that was when everybody, all the games journalists were really insecure about their profession. Oh, God. The, the part where the fucking key just, like, magically appears in her hand. I hate it. I hate so much I'm of like, the stupid what the, you story. Just give, you just gave up. You just fucking gave up. You don't give a shit. You no, fools. <sighs> During Cassie's speech, I kept thinking about how much better Marva's speech was in Andor. I miss Andor. Her speech was badass. Her speech yep. was great. Uh, everybody's um, speech was great. I loved it. I, how there's an element of like, I wish I'd done more in my life. I really do. I I fucked up yeah. by not doing more, and that that was represented with every last thing she did in the show while she was alive too. Mm -hmm. And then that culminates I, in a speech to try and rouse rebellion. the other people that uh she didn't fully sort of uh encapsulate. Yeah. And the, I listened the, to Luthen's speech um, well. the other day for. I uh, love it. Whatever reason, and I was like, God, this is just good. Yeah. The way that he delivers that, he he's like, yes, it's a script, but he's delivering it as if he's sort of making it up as he goes to explain it to the other guy, and it's very it's done very convincingly. And I just monologues really, it's are uh, great. They are they are a gamble, I would say, from a storytelling perspective, because if you nail them, they're awesome. But if you don't, it's like incredibly embarrassing. Yeah, it's cringe. <laughs> like, uh, it's it's pr well, yeah, because Cassie's speech was incredibly cringe. Uh, it's not very interesting, and it's not conveyed in a in a particularly uh rousing way compared to yeah, like. Well, the it's also that just you if you were Kang, one or... of the people who were oppressed or whatever by Kang for this long, and then some girl you don't even recognize comes on screen and says. It's time to rebel! Ah! Yeah, it's just that's like, a, what? That's a, who, like, who are you? Uh, Meanwhile, like, Marva, busted, her know? speech yeah. is going out to all these people that we know knew her it's very true. well. Yeah. That's very tight-knit community, as we saw throughout the season, and yeah. then it culminates in this. And then, like, throwing the, uh, the, the coat over the... Yeah, trying to hide the message. Off her face, but, you know, shouting, fight the Empire. It's great. Um... Uh, oh, and of course, uh, uh, Kino uh, Loy's speech as well. Oh, yeah. Did I, did I mix yeah. up the letters? Yeah, Kino Loy. Yeah, uh, both yeah, both Kino know. and Luthen's speeches. I think those are in the same episode. They're in the same episode, yeah. They are we're just like, episode. damn, jeez. Well, it's, it's just monologues, uh, when they're done well, it's, it's one of the things that I think all of us love about Mike Flanagan is he's really good at monologues. Um, yep. Or rather, he's great at writing monologues and directing the actors to deliver them fantastically. 
And um, it'll just be a yeah, huge I, dump of exactly how fitting everything into place about this person that we've seen for a little bit and no actions about. It's like, oh, this is the the moment that they tell us their backstory that makes everything fit into place. You know what? Um, to uh, cause I now I on my mind uh, the thinking about Independence Day. You know, that's Roland Emmerich, but I really like the speech that is in that film. You guys remember that one? The president, the, the one yeah. the president gives. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that one. Yeah. We will not go quietly into the night. It's like, yeah, that's uh, that's an art to even in a silly movie like Independence Day, <laughs> compared to what we got in Ad Man, where it's like, oh, this is just, uh, oh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah, there's never that moment where you go, let's go, yeah, all right, you know, we're like, oh, oh I want to go home. Go, yeah, let's go. And I mean, of course, music can help as well because God of War Ragnarok, the the big speech right before uh, the battle, it's the music that helps tremendously <laughs> with uh yeah. with making that one epic. Greetings, Rag. Hey, Mela und Frongo. Hello. Oh, hey. Is there any reason to why y'all choose your avatars? The dog, the skull with wheels, and the frog. <laughs> uh, well, I, well, I, I didn't bird. choose the frog. But, the frog um... chose me, kind of. Oh, um, wheels. Just... He looks cool, okay? Good enough for me. The crafting creature from another realm is kind of what he's developed into now. Skull with wheels ah. is like 2019. I, uh, I just like, uh, I really like the dog character. I like the Shiba Inu. The, the, they're I'm very really meany like and fun. Characters. They're, they're peppy and energetic, and I, I just like their, their personalities and, yeah, I just think it's fun. I mean, not really yeah. much to it. It's not a, it would be a fun little that, character. I have the impression there wouldn't be a super thorough answers. I just like Plague Doctors. I've always liked the aesthetic. I like the mask. Um, I think they're cool. Yeah. Bringy, the writer's room of these movies probably looks like a floor covered in Jim Bean bottles and red Solo cups. Yeah, you might be right about that. I don't believe they'd have enough time to finish a bottle with how much is spent on these scripts, though. It's like... You know, cough out bits and bobs, and then they're just done. I came across EFAP recently, and it's helped me get through long office hours and London commutes. Do you have a stream schedule? If so, where can I find it? Well, we I, I don't know why people ask this. I'm very confused, because we've consistently started at 7 p.m. on a Saturday for, like, five years. Yeah, it's uh, Saturday's <laughs> EFAP day. I mean, that's just my life, is that Saturday's EFAP day. Yeah, um, yeah. so maybe it's a matter of you're watching it on the Moolah channel, because this, this comes across to me as something that's not even possible, but I shouldn't be so silly about it. There's some people who may be watching EFAP exclusively through Moolah and being like, where does this show get aired? <laughs> like, where where is the channel that has this on it? That would be the Moolah channel. Uh, so that the, that's where you'd find it at 7 p.m. GMT or BST plus one, I think, would be the equivalent when it switches over. Uh, oh, no, it switches to BST, actually. Make sure I... Yeah, because your hours have changed now in the rags, but mine are changing soon. Um, Mine are... Yeah, because uh, right now it's basically... Well, I guess yeah, it won't I'm, matter because it's this... Um, I'm going by GMT right now, but I'll be going to BST soon. Uh, Our time changes, so it or it March twelfth to November fifth. So we should be, yeah, fresh into a new time. I, I didn't even notice. I just didn't even notice. Oh well, <laughs> just didn't even notice. Yeah. It's uh yeah, we'll be like I said. Uh, BST is British summer time. That starts up, I think, at the end of March for me. So, and we're almost there. But anyway, the, you know, Saturdays, 7 p.m. ish British time. That's that's the easy way to say it. Um, it wouldn't be like that if he only saved one child. Don't know what that is 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 talking about. I'm afraid. What's y'all's favorite movie soundtrack? Mine's either Kung Fu Panda or How to Train Your Dragon. Hello, all and Rags, and especially Fringy. Coom. Hi. Um. The favorite soundtrack is probably going to go to Fellowship of the Ring. Um, and what is it? What was there another question in there? Sorry. Nope, that was it. Yeah, that's that's what I'm giving it to. Um, favorite yeah, movie love. soundtrack. It's an odd one. There's so many, you know. Lord of the Rings definitely up there, though. 
gonna say, you know, Star Wars is in the running as well, and it would probably be Revenge of the Sith out of the six. Why not nine? Why not out of the nine? <laughs> oh, I only went with the canon films. <laughs> Didn't want to do the fanfics, you know. Feels weird to involve them. <laughs> I'd say, uh, Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, like, as a package, are real high up for film soundtracks. Um, the Dark Knight trilogy as well has a lot of bangers. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think about other less conventional choices. Um, Interstellar's got a really cool soundtrack. Shame that it the does. film's not so good. Uh, it does, yeah, that's right. I'm still trying to oh, think bam, of more bam, unconventional bam. choices. Um, oh, um, Ragnarok, God of War, Ragnarok, that's incredible not a music. Movie, but I agree. Well, kind of. <laughs> kind oh, of. Wow, you know, like <laughs> snow game, yeah, movie that's true. game. <laughs> it's yeah. movie game. But I mean, I I think it gets an honorable mention because it's got its, you know, it's it, it's got its, uh, you know, things for characters and the zones are different. I mean, I'd say the same thing about Witcher Three. You know, it, yes, it's not a movie, but like. I almost feel like it's unfair to disqualify games uh, in a lot of well, ways. Well, but, but funnily it's... enough, if you if you included games, I'd have a much more exhaustive list. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll probably but... cut it off there then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, oh, yeah. we, yeah, we, we got a lot of films. I'd be picking answers. like one or two key tracks that I love in a lot of films. Whereas I think with video games, I could often speak to soundtracks broadly because of uh, yeah, I don't know why, but just because. Have you thought about playing Elden Ring again? Not really, no. Um, I just don't have much of a desire to. Meanwhile, I I look forward to the next time I play Bloodborne and uh, something like Dark Souls 1. Hmm. Um, Elden Ring, I, I felt this was going to happen when I was playing it at the time, that any thought of playing it in future would mean I see it as this, like, it's like Dark Souls 1, but really stretched out. And uh, I don't see the point in playing that instead of Dark Souls 1. And you might be like, what? It mm. plays differently, or the, it plays more like a DS3. It's like, oh, that's the same deal, like DS3, but really stretched out, or really oofed up to be a big old open world. I'm, I don't know if... Um, I, this is a question that I find interesting to talk about every once in a while, so I don't want to do it for too long, but just the idea of a, a tailored world for a particular route and experience or multiple routes and multiple experiences or a big open world where you can just explore at your whims like they both have pros and cons but in Dark Souls and Bloodborne for example like I know what challenges they've got set and I enjoy beating them meanwhile in, in Elden Ring it's like alright that's, that's like a whole huge thing where I'm going to be running around and I'll bump into stuff and yeah I'd rather go for the tailored experience when it comes to Soulsborne stuff I guess that's all I figured out when playing Elden Ring but if there's an Elden Ring 2 I'll play it I suppose which is more than likely considering how much money Elden Ring made <laughs> yeah seems seems very likely didn't Dan Harmon say that he credited several writers on Rick and Morty despite him writing the episodes himself because they came up with a basic idea uh, that, I think that explains a lot yeah, Looking and, and at, uh, the output of the Rick and Morty alumni on Marvel projects. Not to speak to his character, but it could just be a a good faith thing. Like, hey, I'll give you a credit for writing it. That'll help you in future. And look what it just did. It gave these people fucking movie scripts. Yep. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't just hand out credits like chewing gum. <laughs> like, this should be something you have to earn. I don't know. Uh... Antifa Girl and Everyone Else. I guess that's a play on the title. I get it. Antifa, see? Because ants. Oh. oh. Okay. Uh, I'm stunned at how much I've stopped caring about the MCU. Last one I've seen in theaters or at home was No Way Home, and I have no plans to change that. Well, yeah, we've, we've very firmly moved into the era of uh, we keep an eye on it because it's a fascinating train wreck. It's not to do with enjoying film anymore. <laughs> um, not at this point but every once in a while you might get a surprise you go oh wow that performance that was something or oh that was a joke that I laughed at or whoa look at that piece of drama there that made me think about drama that's good <laughs> something <laughs> um, because I, I still reject the whole like the notion that you know we had this said like it's elementary or something it was when we were covering The Last of Us that it, to cover something like Ant-Man or Doctor Strange, or that, like, why cover negative things, or blah, 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 blah. There's all these different reasons when it's like, I think you can get so many interesting conversations out of any one of these superhero movies. Shazam, 
we've never covered a story with a child, a like as young as like five or six or seven years old or whatever, getting the powers of Superman. Like, what do you guys have to say about the potential for that kind of story? It's like, oh, well, fuck, there's so many things you could do with that. That's uh, yeah, we discussed insane. a lot of them, yeah, during yeah. our talk. Yeah. You know, and and they give you the opportunity for that to happen. And then we also get to talk about, like, whatever, whatever the things that are happening in that particular plot line, how they did it wrong, and then you know ways they can do it right, surrounding matter, and then keep an eye on box office and stuff. I find it all to be quite interesting. And you know, if the MCU had zero input or effect on culture, and they were still making stuff, and nobody watched it or cared about it, it's like, well, I guess we would move to whatever the thing, like whatever the most successful stories currently are. And you know it won't be them for long if Disney keep this up, and I think they know that. Yeah, yeah I think there's to. a lot of a lot of panicking. Yeah. Uh, Kang would have won if he turned himself into a pickle. Maybe he would have. Could he be a purple pickle? Like he can change his yeah. shape, but he always stays purple he stays no matter what. All the time. Which is so he has to learn to just change himself into things that are purple. You know, like grapes and eggplants. Yeah. There's Which no... you think would help, but sometimes it's very strange to have just a random eggplant laying somewhere when you're looking for Kang. It just doesn't really, you know. Kind of sticks out, wait, and you're like, wait a minute, that's yeah. Kang! And he's like, oh, like, wait fuck. a second, is that Kang? Or wait, wait, no, Kang's blue. Is He's blue, right? He's like, he's like, a, like, blue, like a... but he, he's not blue. Like, he's not physically blue. Physically blue? Yeah, like, as in his skin isn't blue. Because he's it mentally like blue, he's quite sad. He, puts, um, he does seem quite sad. <laughs> Poor guy. Been through yeah. a lot. Um, there's no way the Kangs who have and want to maintain their monopoly on the multiversal travel let Doctor Strange wander in America live. Yeah. I don't even, I don't even know where to begin <laughs> on, like, who those fuckers in the council are or what they do. I don't know. What that one? Yeah, yeah, what do they care about? I have no clue. They, do you? <laughs> Michael Waldron will be fucking controlling that shit. Probably. Imagine how yeah. awful it'll be. I nearly said how well, awful you know, it'll be. Together, it'll be Michael Waldron and Jeff Loveness. The fucking team. dream team. <laughs> Modok was ahead of its time. <laughs> oh, I say ahead. He was yes. Very, very. You're good. I feel, I feel bad for the VFX people making the Mo Dussie. <laughs> Mo Dussie. <laughs> Made a brief appearance in the film. <laughs> Maybe off my game after listening to the recap, but if Final Kang's perfect timeline lasts until Loki Season 1, then shouldn't there be no variant to meet Janet 30 years ago? Is ah, Return of the Multiverse ah. retroactive, or have I put more thought into this than they did? Also, Hyrax. That's what the thought process yeah. becomes, yeah, that everything you saw is the world before Loki did what he did with the stuff, and then it changes everything everywhere or at all times. So. Yeah, something like it's that. So, it's so, like, the brain doesn't wrap around it very easily at all. Which, Nobody... believe me, theirs doesn't either. Yeah, Holy I just shit. don't think you can make sense of it. It's all nonsense. There's not a human alive who could who could explain to you accurately. Yeah, even the people happening. who write it couldn't explain it to you. Well, and the people yeah. who enjoy and defend it say like, "Don't think about it," and you have to not think about it because it'll never oh, make that's, sense. That's yeah. Who'd win in a fight? Good rat or pretty smart ant? Oh, mm -hmm. um, in a fight? Mm -hmm. Depends on um, how many ants there are. It's true. Yeah, I guess if they're, only if they're type so two, far. you know, if they got to type two, the good rats are gonna have trouble with that. Oh yeah, if, mm. if they got to yeah type two civilization or whatever, yeah. I saw Lost Wish today. I see why you guys love it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty yeah, good. Foolish Fringo, you must find and devour the seven crystal babies, or spend eternity trapped in the deep didgeridoo. A deep didgeridoo. Oh, that's a uh, that's a deep lore reference. That's um that's um the when Lisa stayed home from school and she was playing uh Dash Dingo. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> None shucks. Those aren't even Australian. Yeah. <laughs> when, <laughs> like koalas with nunchucks jump out of a crate and start beating Dash Dingo to death. <laughs> Lick a cosmic chicken's neck thing for intelligence. I mean, if you're lucky enough cosmic to find a cosmic chicken. Thing? The wattle? 
Yeah, they said neck thing. I don't blame them for that. It's okay that they don't know what the neck thing is called, isn't it? We forgive them. Oh, there's yeah. Sorry. yeah. Yeah, I guess most people wouldn't know. This one simply says, love you guys. Oh, well, thank, well, thank you. you. I appreciate that. Did you know you can write Marvel scripts with chat GPT? It's terrifyingly easy. I saw a Twitter thread displaying all of the features of the birth of chat GPT-4, and it is actually getting a little bit scary what it can do. Uh, it's like a tool. The, the guy basically uh, set up the thread as these are just like 20 ways chat GPT can give you a career. And some of it seemed pretty dodgy, but it includes and is not limited to like it's it, it uh movie scripts is one of the things it, it's getting to the point where it can code a game for you as you describe it like uh wow. it's getting, it, yeah it's getting a little bit intense and, and you start you're doing the thing your brain it's like oh man that plus the stuff i saw about the thing over there with the ai plus the thing i saw with that the deep fakes the Translation of like styles, the the audio and the voice stuff, and the you know like it's all happening a little fast. It's all <laughs> so like, happening very quickly. And then you're like, what's gonna what's gonna come out of all this? What's the big spooky thing that happens? You're like, no, it could be a big wonderful thing. You're like, okay, hope it's a wonderful thing. Hey, just recently started going through your early stuff, and I'm halfway through EFAP 21, and am three, I think, episodes away from when Jared comes on. How many more EFAPs are there in the Jared saga? There's not that many. There really isn't. There really isn't that many. He, uh, thought of that. Mm-hmm. Greetings, you massives. To those who've seen Chainsaw Man, what did y'all think of it? I haven't seen it. I have not seen it. Is he like a lumberjack? Got a big chainsaw for a face. That's I all I he, know. Oh, you see that guy from Resident Evil Four? No, Dr. Salvador. Dr. Salvador is very unique. Busy with his village antics. Fortify your minds. Start reading Stoicism. Yeah, that'd do it. I think it is definitely worthwhile to read uh, Epictetus or Seneca, Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> Some Epictetus. interesting. Hey, show some fucking respect. I just did. Hmm. Rags, uh, epic titties a good thing or a bad thing? Epic titties? Oh, I guess, I mean, by definition, if yeah. they're epic, they're, uh, yeah, epic titties. Now, because I don't, I don't think that epic titties necessarily mean very large ones. You know, no, I don't think, I don't think that's baked into it. I think the the part is that they need to be, you know, proportional to the rest of the body and they can't be, you know, well, too big and I would say that epic doesn't mean they need to be massive, but epic still means above average size. I think that is like essential. Um I don't know that there's such a thing as like a small epic kind of seems like a uh kind of a bit of a paradox, an oxymoron. Epic pretty smart ants. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, what's an epic uh, ant? Is it relative to other ants, I guess? Maybe. Yeah, well, I, I, I would assume it ant, I assume relative to other ant sizes, right? Like compared to a door, there there's never going to be an epic ant. But if there's an if there's an ant that's pretty big relative to ants and you know he works really really hard and does his best all the time and you know puts others before himself does it and taxes? yeah, I yeah, yeah I I consider that being well, then, if a magical thing happened ant. that made an ant that was bigger than a door, would all the previously epic ants now not be epic because that guy's there and he's clearly the epic ant now? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Relativity. What can What can you say? You know. What can you say? It's definitely. Uh. Definitely something to think about. Um. Howdy, massives. What would you say makes dark slash edgy humor work or not? That's the first question. So. Uh, That's makes incredibly complicated. Work. That is incredibly uh, complicated. Something that generally bears true is an edgy joke that pertains to, I don't know, like race or something, doesn't tend to be funny if the person who's saying it, you get the impression, genuinely believes what they're saying. Yeah. That, uh, that tends to seriously dilute the humor. So to some extent, you could say that the humor is derived from who's saying it and how they say it. I would and... argue... The more clever and layered and almost even difficult to understand the joke 
uh, the more protected it'll be from how edgy you can go. I guess what I mean by that is that if you say a joke that requires three different references, the once you piece them together is like an incredibly edgy thing, the people might laugh at the fact that it, you know, they're like, what? They put it together. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a, you know, realizing it's almost like a secret club of a joke at that point. Um, and they'll be impressed with the how it was created. Um, so, like, like how ingenious you can be with, with a joke like that. But sometimes the opposite will happen with how blunt you can be. Um, but obviously, clearly, joking can also work too. It's It's such a. It's humor. Humor is complicated. It's very complicated. Um, it's hard to say what makes a joke work. It's just something that generally seems to bear true is if the person actually believes the thing that they're saying, it tends to not be very fun. I mean, just... That's why, I mean, that, that's kind of like why dead baby jokes and Holocaust jokes can be so funny is because like that you go into it with the unstated assumption that those things are bad. Um, then the joke relies on you know, them being really, really terrible things so yeah. that, to make the joke work. Um. I think what uh, Mola was highlighting was, I guess, that there's shock value from edgy jokes as, like, a thing that's present in very blunt jokes, but then, conversely, th yeah, like, layered jokes is a little bit more considered and thoughtful than maybe is even, like, appropriate considering what the subject matter is. Uh, with an edgy joke. It's, it's humor's complicated. That's the uh, that's long and short of it. <laughs> yeah. Next up, on one hand, I find ER's edge to be hilarious, while Synthetic Man's humor is quite snoy. Scritches for the good frog. Well, I feel oh, like well, that. We called it. I mean, Scritches they, for the good frog. <laughs> it's super easy to, to understand the difference between them two. First of all, Synthetic Man was very uh, explicit. He's not joking. Yeah, um, I, that's the thing. When he says those jokes about like the Jews and blacks and gays and trans and people, and it, like he he's like a, an, he's an actual vile person who thinks really awful things about those kinds of people. Yeah, to the point so, where he'll get defensive. Yeah, I think one of the best examples in that series of clips was uh, he kept making like woman jokes, right? Which is one thing you can do that. There, some of my favorite edgy jokes will involve shitting on women, right? But in the yeah, same way absolutely. that I involve, I love jokes shitting on everybody pretty much, but. Um, he keeps shitting on women, just in general. It's like, okay, that's one thing. And then it's like, um, you know, you know the writing's bad because women wrote the game. You're like, okay. Hmm. Keep saying it, keep saying uh, it. And then he hmm. says, uh, you know, there were five women or whatever on the team. You're like, yeah, okay, get it. And then he's like, and then he starts saying, like, there were five diversity hires. There were five people who were going to destroy this game writing-wise. And you're like, okay, I get it. And then someone in chat says, you know, one of those five you listed, uh, she didn't write the game. She only helped with um, uh, accessibility. And then... Uh, he's like, yeah, well, there's still four other women who wrote it, so. You know, you, you, there's no joke there. That's just him expressing the correction on your correction. You're implying that the bad quality is, like, you know, reduced by the fact that this woman wasn't necessarily involved in the writing when there's clearly four other women who are. You're like, oh. There's nothing oh, funny so about that. You're just, not really, you're just... Not really a joke, then. That's just a stated perspective. Yeah. You just, uh, you just, and a really and, concerning one. Yeah, and it really upsets you that women are right in the game. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, I mean, okay. what, what is it about like the Django on chain scene with all the 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 Ku Klux Klan? You know, when they're there, like riding up on their horses, arguing with each other over the bags that they had cut open. It's like a lot of what makes that funny is it's like, wow, look at these idiots. Yeah. You know, like look at these fools, these morons, only to get absolutely blown away by Schultz. You know. Like, it's the recognition of, oh, yeah, these guys are clowns, though. This is absolutely clownish. Um, it's that self-awareness. Yeah, because there, there was still, we knew this would happen anyway, but there's always going to be people who are like, wow, so edgy humor's not allowed anymore. And it's like, no, man, <laughs> we're actually okay. probably more okay than, than most people on YouTube with the edgiest of things. Um, but yeah, as soon absolutely. as I think you're not joking, it gets real awkward real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, cause yeah, dark and edgy humor is real cool, and there's a place for it in the world, and I want to reduce the amount it gets shat on. Unfortunately, it's a great old, uh, way for other people to come in and be like, yeah, those things, yeah, yeah, those things are true, though. And then you're like, what? You're, they're like, what? <laughs> like, let's, we'll talk about something else, it's fine. Uh, speaking of hive minds, did anyone notice how the Ant Premier hosts followed and shielded the Jonathan Majors directive? as opposed to the actual star of the film. Why the panda 
Panda Scent Entertainment Media. I saw the compilation where everyone's talking about how incredible his acting was and how like hot he is and stuff. It was kind of weird because there's a whole cast, and you're like, hello. But um, I think they need to make Jonathan Majors kind of happen right now because he's going to be leading the villain end of uh, all the rest of the Avengers shit in this phase and the next phase as well. Exactly, it's important that people. Uh, and remember, Ant Man. His performance. There were versions of this where Ant Man didn't even fucking live. So yeah, uh, I don't think they care that much about Paul Rod Paul Rudd at this point. Uh, but they should because he's good. He's one of the few remaining ones they have left that probably can give them a you know low energy, rather. Uh, I was gonna say low effort, good performance. Like I don't know of Paul mm -hmm. Rudd ever giving in a bad performance, really. No, yeah. I don't think so. I, I don't think I've ever seen him go like, ooh, that was rough. Yeah. He's reliable. Hello, Massives. Would Hi. recommend reading the manga series Chainsaw Man. It is a series about a man that turns into chainsaws. Emotionally broke me. Okay. That's uh, definitely unusual, and I believe you that it is a manga. E. Ants aren't people. Fringdol Fringler. Damn. Wow. Harsh words. I know you said that. We'll have to speak to him later about that. Mm -hmm. Metal, when did you think... When you... Th when you think do you speak English or German? Oh, they need a comma in there. But when you think, do you speak English or German? That's an interesting question. Um, uh, I think I asked him that semi-recently, and he said it used to be German, but it's pretty much swapped... Uh, swapped... That's a word. Swapped to English. Hmm. But... Uh, I could be wrong if that was his answer, and we'll we'll try and ask him again if we remember to next time we're in a call with him. A I wonder granny. if, like what, like like a like a like an infant, you know, like the language, the quote unquote language that a uh, like an infant might think in, if they don't have like a human language, mm. you know, what would they, you know, what would they sort of use to. It's hard to understand to really explain it. I don't really know the words. But like before you know a language, or maybe you've never heard a language, like if you're, you've always been deaf, how do you sort of rationalize the thoughts in your head? You know, things like that. I guess it's just a different way of understanding that I can't really understand myself because I'm just not, you know, I didn't grow up with that, you know, limitation or anything. Mm-hmm. Granny Zena's introduction scene is a masterpiece. Oh, it's a, it's a piece. Something's happening in there, yeah. It's a piece of something. Ostrich is the name of an avian concentration camp. I get it. Oh, I see. Ostrich. Yep. I've lost all hype for the Suicide Squad game after finding out it is a live service. What are your thoughts? Um... Something that I noticed while watching it, aside from the general concerns about live service stuff, is um, the game seems to want to heavily emphasize moving around these big uh, like spaces, like these big play spaces, um, and like chaining together, I guess, attacks and stuff. Um, it it reminds me of Sunset Overdrive, but the problem that I see, and the reason why Sunset Overdrive was so engaging and why I kind of don't view what they showed as particularly engaging, is Sunset Overdrive ties rewards to uh, essentially constantly moving, like non-stop jumping between like grind rails and off of like bouncing, like trampolines and uh, like wall running and stuff like that, and switching weapons with like a, just a, a plain point system. Um, and and then of course, sort of like baked into it mechanically, that it's it's the same with Ratchet and Clank, right? It's most fun when you're switching between different weapons constantly. Um, that game doesn't seem to have any point system tied to actually moving around a bunch, and it seems to have like a two weapon slot system too, with like very straightforward, um, banal weapons like you know just general assault rifles and pistols and stuff compared to like really zany and wacky, um. Items, so it's kind of like comes across as a diet sunset overdrive. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, yeah, it doesn't look uh, very interesting from a gameplay perspective, especially for the first Rocksteady game in eight years. 
mm -hmm. kind of bizarre. It's kind of a little bit strange that this is the product of like eight years of work, seemingly. But I'm I'm guessing that's not the case. That this was some this was decided halfway through that time. I don't know. Yeah, just something looks off. As for something being but a live service, live services are great if like the game is successful and it keeps going and the live service is worth it. Then live services can be great. However, a lot of live service games release and there's like a season of content, maybe two, and the game just stops getting supported or it ends or the seasons of content just aren't really that good or they're, and they're super lackluster, not really worth it. Um, so it can kind of go either way. Um, you, yeah, they, they, they definitely, definitely are something to be wary service. of. In this case, I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think what really threw people off is essentially it's got a very uh, Destiny-like menu, you know? Like, it's uh, it's got all the tabs on the top and, like, all of the weapons and, and gear. Like, they have those stats just filled with numbers and stuff. It's just kind of like, oh, I don't like the look of that. I think, like, in instinctively, it's like, mm. I guess we'll have to see. It might be getting delayed, though, so, um, because of the response it got. <laughs> I am amused by this game. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yes, I am aware we got the fuck up saying thanks. <laughs> I mean, that's just the kind of, that's just what you put. <laughs> oh, fucked up sign. <laughs> when it How arrived, they were just sign? like, well, that's the Body sign. It's better than no sign, I guess. In a way, <laughs> is, it? is it is it better? Because like, well, it, it is. You can be the only Kurga Bing. <laughs> Kurga Bing. Have you guys ever been to the Kurga Bing? Listen, don't be, don't try to be a second-rate Burger King. Just be a first-rate Kurga Bing. Yeah. <laughs> I buy the Bab Hugger. I guess I'm curious. Was this a mistake or what happened? I don't know. <laughs> Could all be Photoshop. I don't really care. It's just funny. Maybe. I like to believe that Kurga Bing exists. I hope it's real. Um, also, Kevin Conroy deserved better. I'm not sure exactly what that's referring uh, to. I'm guessing that, it's woman? that is his last role is a uh, Suicide oh, okay. Squad. Uh, but I mean, who knows, right? Maybe the story will be really interesting. Maybe he'll get an opportunity to uh, have been able to like flex his talents one last time. Maybe. Um, I suppose the awkward part is it's the game is like the Justice League of uh, the, the villains. Um, I'm not sure what it looks like if they'd have you tasked with killing Batman, you know, just to be like, oh, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's not like you fault or anything, right? But like, oh, I don't like that. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully it'll give him, it'll have given him an opportunity to, uh, yeah, showcase his talents one last time. Uh, where does Chill Penguin rank in the MMX birds? Uh, not like at the top. That I remember that there were, uh, some other ones that were, um, that I remember liking, but the problem is I can't give you that list right now. <laughs> I, I don't, I, I, I have not meaningfully, like, ranked the, uh, Mega Man bird bosses. Yeah, sorry. Uh, earlier you said Harrison Ford was only in four Star Wars movies. Actually, he's been in others. He played the only practical effect Gungan in the first prequel. Oh, well, that's quite an accolade. There are the none only practical effect Gungan was. I don't even know about this. Was there a practical was effect? Was there a Gungan? practical Gungan? Yeah. They made a practical effect Gungan, but they didn't make one practical clone trooper. <sighs> Now you're making me think, like, was there ever a practical clone? There must have been one, right? I don't think I don't... there was a single practical clone. No, I don't think so. That must have been a commitment to being, like, gotta have them all look that way, because they... I don't uh, fucking get it. Why? I don't get it either. Like, it would uh, look I think so much we better just... practical. Well, yeah, because they've uh... aged, like, in Attack of the Clones, like, they've not aged well. No. And Revenge of the Sith, like, the fucking... Like, I don't get it. You had to get Tamora Morrison there. You had to get him, like, moving around. Why would you not just give him a suit to wear? Why would they do that? I don't, un I don't see the reason for that. <laughs> like, that's what I think is baffling me so much. I just don't see the reason to do it. When we were having our discussion on the prequels and stuff, I think we had said 
they should have made like a dozen so that whenever you have like a couple with the actors and stuff, exactly. you have real ones there. And then when you pulled back to the big battles and things yeah. of that nature, you could have the exactly. CGI ones. But exactly. Nope. I don't get it. a bunch. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they had real stormtroopers and everything. It's just you're making more work for yourself for no reason at all. Um, I get what the movie's getting at, but it's just miserable and nihilistic to sit through. The story is a nihilist idea of what an optimist thinks. Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I'm not sure how you, so... It's a nihilist view to? of an, what an optimist thinks. I'm really not sure what you're talking about. Who is the optimist? <clears throat> I is there a nihilist, like, point of view to. in that film? I'm trying to remember. I don't think so. I... I have no... Yeah, I'm I'm lost. I don't know. I mean, Kang is like, I need to be freed so I can go stop the other Kangs. And then Scott is like, I want to... Well, they try to imply that he's not helping people much anymore. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, whatever that was. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure where that's coming from exactly. Oh, yeah, they I said previous chat was talking about the whale. Oh. A nihilist idea of what an optimist thinks. Oh, they must be talking about Brendan Fraser's character. That he because he's sort of an optimist. I don't understand but what's just saying he's nihilistic about know. a nihilistic view of his optimism, which I don't know that I agree with that. I'm not even sure what to make of that as an optimist. I don't even actually. like the film's whole point is to live honestly and to think of the best in people. How is that mm. nihilistic? That's uh, pretty not. Yeah, that's pretty nihilistic. To be fair, <laughs> seems the complete opposite. I'd have to know more about your take. I'm sorry, can't really work with that. But you know, uh, Rags's voice is the most alive. Everyone else is a pretty dead, especially metal. <laughs> you see, that's just because I was really excited to talk about. What were we talking about in this is episode? That, uh, Ant Man. That's because I was really, really excited to talk about Ant Man and the Wasp Quant Quantum Mania. I really, really, I was just excited, and I was full of energy, I was vibrant, I was ready to go. This was a film that inspired me, as it should inspire all of us. Yeah. And if the others didn't share that enthusiasm, I totally understand. Not everybody's, you know, into the same kinds of things. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. There's plenty of movies that we talk about that I just don't have an incredible amount of passion for that they do. That's why, you know, we make a great team. I'd say so. Alive and dead together. It creates nothing but uh, undead or something. Blood Brothers. And the final message. Thoughts on Little Big Burger. I don't know what that is. Me either. I, I don't think I know what that is either. Damn. Oh well. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> okay, well, thank you all for tuning in, and we shall see you on the next thing that relates to whatever it is that we're up to. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for the kind donations and messages. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.